What's up everyone, Drew Binsky here, and unfortunately we are on our last day of this incredible three-week road trip around Turkey with my boy Anno. He's amazing, we've had an incredible time, and in this video I just kinda wanna do a recap and tell you some of our favorite experiences around this amazing country. So let's start in Istanbul. Istanbul, we had a quick tour in Istanbul. There was nothing new for you because you already have been in Istanbul for seven times. Right, right. and I just wanna say right off the bat, the farther away you get from Istanbul, the more amazing the culture is, the better the food is, the nicer the people is. Thank you, very much. Bye. So we went to Bursa after that. Bursa, um, there was a grand mosque in Bursa. It's a nice city, nothing super special, but right. we ate Iskander, do you remember? We've had so many things, I don't remember everything. We they, they were just pouring butter on top. Oh yes, 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 of course, just like that. Yeah. Hot butter coming on top. Yeah, yeah. The butter, good, makes a difference, very good. <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, thank you, goodbye, yeah. America, Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. After Bursa, we went to Ankara, Ankara yes. which is where he lives. It's the capital of Turkey and surprisingly it was pretty chill for a capital city. It was nice. We had really good food there. Yeah, exactly. Aspava. We As ate Aspava. Aspava. How do you like it? It was incredible. There's many Aspavas in Ankara. Exactly. But we went exactly. to the best one, of course. This is so good. I'm in, I'm in heaven right now. We visited the tomb of the founder of Republic of Turkey. Huge Atatürk. plaza, like massive, with really nice buildings and it was cool to see his tomb. And the castle. The castle where we learned about the, 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 the one-handed drummer. Yeah. Such an amazing kid, I really respected him. Exactly. And then we went to Konya, which is where we saw the tomb of Rumi. Rumi, Rumi is one of the most important figures in Islam. He is believed one of the best teachers also. Right, and so that was pretty interesting to go to Konya. But then after Konya, in my um, opinion, is where the trip really got amazing. First <laughs> we went to Ermenek, which is where he's from, which is a mountain village. Not exactly like this, but somewhere really tucked away in the mountains and it's so peaceful there. We had home-cooked meal from your family. So this is all kind of the side dishes, which looks fantastic. And the grandma's excited to eat it. <laughs> It's just so adorable. We uh, sailed on a boat in the man-made river, yeah. uh, ran man-made lake. lake. Yes. What else did we do? Uh, we visited the nomads <laughs> in the mountains. Yes, that was cool. It was also a different experience. I never forget the, their like faces, like really wrinkly faces, just sitting there enjoying the, the day. And a lot of people were eating goat head soup. We have seen they were making the molasses. Yes. From the grape juice. Grape molasses. And then we moved to Adana first. Adana is where I made the $10 video, uh, the $10 budget video. It was the hottest place in Turkey. It was a little bit, um, couldn't really get the vibe. Exactly. We were looking for a, a nice bazaar. We were looking for a nice, beautiful street like most other places in Turkey have, but we didn't really find it there. It was just the beginning of another page. Like Adana was the first step. Then we went to Hatay, <laughs> yes. the second step. Hatay, the province, that little province in the southern part of Turkey that borders Syria is unbelievable. We started in Antakya, yeah. such a beautiful place. Um, I, I love the hummus and the, the food and, and, and the, the Syrian inspired food. It, it's right where like the Syrian culture and Turkish culture blends together. And we went to exactly. the Syrian border. Yeah, Yayla Do. Yayla Do, this town, and people invited yeah, us for it tea. Was amazing. Just such a cool experience out there. And these men drink 20, 15 to 20 glasses of chai per day. What a life. I also have been there for the first time and it was a really different experience for me because I didn't really communicate with those people in my life. Right. So it was really, really good experience for me. My favorite part about Antakya was this underground settlement. Oh, yeah. It's, they just, just, they built a hotel and they just discovered it underground and it's like, it, it's, a, it's a hammam. It's, a part is hammam, a part is a villa and we just saw the floor mosaic floor. Unbelievable. This, this is the biggest mosaic, biggest one piece mosaic in the world. And it's so detailed and it's like 2,000 years old, insane. And after that we went to Maraş. Karaman Maraş, which is known for, as the ice cream capital of Turkey. Uh, we learned about how it was created from the mountains. Mm -hmm. They use a certain texture. Yeah. It looks like flour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The salep. And if you eat it, you like, yeah, it was too <laughs> sticky and it becomes a different structure yes. in your mouth. And it was really uh, great to learn about that ice cream culture. And that, the mosque there was amazing. Oh yeah, 
really big one. Top three mosques for me in Turkey. It was not an old one, but really big. After Karaman Maraş, we went to Gaziantep, the food capital. Yeah, Everything Turkey. there is food, markets, street vendors, pastries, pistachio. What was the name of that pistachio one? Oh, the Katmash. Yeah, Katmash. Oh, so good. Wait, what else did we eat in Gaziantep? Beyran, the soup mm -hmm. in the morning mm -hmm. after Katmash. Even if I had food poisoning, it was still good. I like it because it has a lot of garlic and my stomach is a little bit messed up right now so this is what I need. Gaziantep is the city where we didn't pay for anything because they were so friendly that they just kept giving us free food. Exactly. It was amazing. After Gaziantep we went to Göbekli Tepe. Göbekli Tepe. Göbekli Tepe. I'm learning slowly. <laughs> so it's this 10,000 BC settlement and there's these like T uh, structured temples that they're worshipping the gods and it's really remote. It's, it's in these like plains. There's no food, water sources, no food. It's like exactly. It's like there is no point to settle there. But people were believing those places and those structures were right. the temples. And then people settled to be close to those temples. And it really makes me wonder like how many other ancient settlements can we can we find in that area as we're getting closer and closer to Mesopotamia. And the next place was Mardin. Mardin. He didn't hype it up at all. I had no expectations. And it was so amazing. I, we're driving through this like desert plains for a long time, five hours. And all of a sudden you just see a mountain with a huge castle on top of it and a, and a settlement right below it. And, and he was like, that's Mardin. And so we went there and literally you have to like these all these narrow side streets you go all the way up a beautiful old town that's really preserved yeah six seven hundred years old yeah mostly six seven hundred years old well preserved and like we just started to feel the history yes and all the energy yes it was amazing and that's where we met sultan kozen who is the world's tallest man he wouldn't even be in this frame if he was standing next to us. Yeah. Uh, but he was very nice. We sat in his house with his family. So nice. We had a breakfast with them. Unbelievable Amazing. experience. And then maybe the best experience in Mardin was the hammam, a Turkish bath. We basically <laughs> get naked and have an old, hairy, um, fat Turkish man like do this, <laughs> like taunt, he's taunting me. And then he like, they scrub every part of your body clean. And it was pretty cool. Yeah, it was a great experience. I love hummums. It was a pretty great experience. And then our original plan was to get lunch in Diyarbakir and drive all the way up to Ez Erzurum. Erzurum. But we loved Diyarbakir so much that we stayed 24 hours. It's my favorite place in Turkey. It's my favorite place in Turkey too. It's amazing. So it's where most people, 90% or so are Kurdish. So you're hearing the Kurdish language, which is really interesting. But what I loved about it, it just feels like you step back in time. Everybody's not in a hurry. Nobody's on their phones. They're dressed very traditionally. The, all the old men or the amjas are sitting on the tables drinking tea. Very friendly people. Oh, what did uh, you think? They, they were so nice. Like everyone was inviting us for chai and they wanted to have conversation with us. They wanted to ask you some questions. Where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. Because they didn't really see a lot of tourists since yeah. the war, like since last five years. So they were also surprised to see you and we really enjoyed it. Like we uh, spent maybe one hour drinking chai in, mm -hmm. in a like six, seven hundred years old wall. Yeah, the wall, wall, it's the second biggest city wall in the world and it's six kilometers and it's really thick and really tall and you, you can just like, there's like a coffee shop like in the middle of it. Officially the coolest cafe in the world on top of the Diyabakar wall. And the, I like how the walls are like ingrained in their society. There's people just having a picnic right next to a massive medieval wall. And it's pretty sad when you're up there, you can see the destruction. Four or five years ago, a third of the old town of Diyabakar was destroyed and it was really sad. But um, the people are moving on and they're looking forward to a, a safer and better life. Exactly. You can feel it. And I don't know, Diyabakar was amazing. I could not recommend I it. I feel I will definitely go back there, but I'm sure you'll feel the same. Inshallah. Inshallah. Then our plan was to go to Artvin, which is in the northeastern part, a mountainous place like this. And we stopped in Erzurum, which I thought was pretty cool. For lunch? Yeah. I, do, you, do you remember what we ate? Cha kebab. Ja kebab. <laughs> yes. Good. Ja kebab. Good. Really good. It, it's a uh, meat that's spinning this way instead of this way and it's really tasty. Mm -hmm. High elevation, uh, ski capital of Turkey, winter sports. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Then we were trying to go to Artvin and all of a sudden roadblock. After 150 kilometers, 
rangers stopped us and they said road is blocked and if we wait like four hours we yeah. would have passed but we didn't want to wait it would have been dark by then so we decided to change the plan and go back down like three hour detour and we ended up sleeping in Gemushane. Gemushane <laughs> was a pretty cool place i mean just a small little town nothing that special and then we made it to Trabzon, Trabzon. which is on the northern coast, coast of turkey it's really beautiful on the black sea and the first place we went was near girisan in a village called kushoy Kushkoi. Kushkoi. <laughs> I'm getting there. The village called Kushkoi, which is known to have the bird or the whistle language. <laughs> and literally people live in a mountainous town like this and they communicate by like <laughs> and if they have a full language by doing that. Fascinating. And like they said they can they can speak any language by whistling. Like Spanish, English, whatever you want. If you explain the meaning of the word, they do it like. It was so impressive. It was really cool. Yeah, exactly. Then we went back through Trabzon and we picked up Daniela, who's recording. Hi. Hi. <laughs> She's from Colombia. She's really cool. And she joined us for this last part of the trip. <laughs> and then we went uh, from Trabzon, we went to Rize, which I liked a lot. It's like a chill town. Trabzon, on the other hand, was it wasn't that special for me. It's just a really like European feeling town. It was okay, but I really liked Rize for some reason. Maybe it's because the restaurant we went to. Liman oh, Lokantasi. Amazing wow. man. Exactly. We ate again like five, six different things, and everything was so tasty. Mm -hmm. And the owner was super friendly. And he didn't charge so us. So friendly, he didn't charge us. I think we've had at least 10 free meals. Yeah. And we, we were trying to pay. We're like, please take the money. And then there comes a point where if you pay or if you tip, it's disrespectful. It is. Because he really, like from the heart, wants to give us free food. Yeah, because we, we are the guest and guests don't pay anything and you cannot tip if, and, if and, you're a guest. And this is what I love so much about Turkish culture because where I come from, nobody would turn down a tip. If you tip someone, it's always appreciated and accepted. But here, they just wouldn't let us pay. Yeah. It's incredible, and then man. Then we started a journey through the mountains. Yesterday we, we drove to a village called Pokut. Yes. There must be 50 people living here. And it was quite the journey here. It's about a 45 degree angle like this, but the streets are literally it's like a snake. And the roads are not good. And a couple times I thought we weren't gonna make it. I think we're not gonna make it. And we need to go all the way back. I was sure a bit, but you felt a bit stressed. But we made it and we got here almost when it was dark and it was super cloudy and we just woke up to this view holy crap man amazing i got no words to say like this is also my first time here and i was super excited to come here because this place is really famous in instagram everyone comes here and have breakfast where we had our breakfast and take pictures <laughs> it's so beautiful really famous and it's really worth to come what i love so much about turkey is that it has every kind of na nature you have really nice beaches in the west. You have Cappadocia, which is like the moon. It looks like you're walking on the moon. Then you have beautiful forests, tall mountains, 5,000 meters you have yeah, yeah, more, yeah. which is like Everest base camp level. 5,400 we have. You have greenery up here in the northeast. You have desertish plains in the south. It's really hot in the south. And also like the cuisine, every two hours, you have different meal. And like, I thought I would gain a lot of weight. I think I didn't because we were just so busy like moving around. Exactly. But we ate so well, man. Thank you. I'm glad that. Like, Turkish food is now in like my top three worldwide just because of the diversity. There's so many different meals and it changes everywhere. And I don't even know what was my favorite meal. Mm. Do you? Please think. Please think about it. I keep think coming back to Kataman Marash just because it was so unexpected. For me, it was just, oh, we're going to stop in this town. And then we had this incredible meal with different dishes with your friend Fat Fatma. Fatma. That was one of the best. Um, Erzurum was pretty good. Erzurum was good. The kebab we ate in Gaziantep, I still remember e eggplant kebab. It was yeah. so tasty for me. I just want to say it's been an incredible trip around Turkey. I had only been to Istanbul and Antalya and Cappadocia before this, and now I have a whole new appreciation and respect for this country. It's unbelievable place. Thank you, Arno. Thank you, Arno. We will do it again, man. Thanks uh, for coming. He's my go-to guy now around Turkey and maybe in other countries we'll meet for sure. I really want that. 
I will love it. Hope you guys enjoyed the, the series on Turkey. It was so much fun to make it and um, stay tuned for some crazy countries coming up in the region. Bye bye. Bye bye. Cool? Abi. That was good. Amazing. Thank you. Hey, benim divane gündüm dağlara düştün yalını. Hey, benim divane gönlüm dağlara düştün yalını. Mucefayı kendi özüm pek mail gördüm yalını. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and ring that little bell so you can get notified on all my upcoming videos as I take you to every single country in the world.